Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series. We are here again today kicking off with the Kuram White team. We started last week with Kuram White Sogalea. We've played around with it a lot, we've tweaked it a lot, identified a lot of the threats that we were coming up against and struggling against and then adapted the team as we were going along. And I feel like in yesterday's episode we hit a nice plateau with the team to take into a final version tomorrow. But I did say in yesterday's episode if any day we were going to make some wacky changes and change things up, try some different things out, it was going to be today. So this is why we've got this team right here in front of you to test out and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Now one of the main reasons I've tagged on the Dustman Necrozma was it's a bit wacky there like the Nihiligo idea. But I feel like Dustman Necrozma does a similar role to Sogaleo being the steel type. It just has a better defensive ability than the Sogaleo acts a lot better under Trick Room and you know it kind of gives the team that diversity. We've tagged in the Incineroar again, we've got Ludicolo and then we've got Politoed. Now Politoed is in there because it's got the Drizzle ability and it kind of compensates a little bit for the Kyogre that we're missing normally played with the Dustmane Necrozma and I've thought for a long time that Politoed and Dustmane Necrozma with something like Evelto could work very well and I thought well why not try it in this core today because Kuram White needs that really hard dedicated support from a steel type and just made across my fist to build perfectly. It's going to be a trick room Pokemon. Politoed can enjoy trick room, Incineroar can enjoy trick room. Then you've got the really fast mode of the team with the Ludicolo, the Tapu Koko and then the Kuram White. It's a bit middling but still fast enough to do a lot of damage to a lot of threats like Groudon for instance that does threaten the Dustman Necrozma so heavily. I think it's a real nice mix, it's going to be a lot of fun playing it today. As always the team is in the description with a poker paste and a roll paste for you guys to try out if you'd like. Um, but as always before we get into it, if you do enjoy this sort of content make sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these daily battle episodes that we have coming out. As well as our guides, our restreams and all the other content that we have related to Pokemon, VGC of course, um, and also leave a comment because I love hearing from you guys, I love hearing your opinions, your suggestions and just generally interacting with you. It is great to hear from you and it's such a privilege to have such a great group of people on the channel and supporting it. So without further ado, let's crack some music on and let's get into this one today. Now I will just say thank you so much to each and every one of you that have suggested things over the last couple of weeks with this team and it's really hard sometimes to fit all of those Pokemon and suggestions into like 10 games that we've got on the channel and the, if I had it my way we could play Kieran White for a lot longer but I understand that the Moon series doesn't go on for that long so we want to make sure that we are squeezing in as many teams as we can throughout the series but we've got a first opponent so let's hop straight into it. Whoa, we're going up against Incineroar, Stack Attacker, Evelto, Tapu Koko, Groudon and Venusaur so we've got that very early kind of build of the format, the Moon Series, very popular team that we saw between Veltal and Groudon there. You're going to have the Venusaur there putting on a lot of pressure, especially if paired in lead with that Groudon. Veltal's likely going to be Assault Vest. You've got the Trick Room mode here with the Stack Attacker support and probably the Groudon and the Incineroar and then the Tapu Koko there with its terrain and doing Tapu Koko things. So, I feel like our rain mod isn't too bad here, um, but one thing I do have to be a little bit careful of is that, that Venusaur in particular. The Veltal does threaten a lot of the team, but we do have Kuram White and we do have Tapu Koko to deal with that. Um, but I think if we're going sensible, which we should do in these matches, I think we're going to lead off with Incineroar. We definitely need that Intimidate support. Tapu Koko as well for the terrain support, especially against that Venus. So if we see leading with that Groudon, we need a way to stop it putting things to sleep. Now, this is the other problem we've got. Now, I do really like... We could rely on Koko to deal with Evelto, or we could bring Kurum and then not bring our weather, which is pretty... I think we need our weather in this match, to be honest. Let's go Incineroar. Let's go Coco. I feel like we're going without our restricteds here. And I'm locking in without any restricteds. Which seems crazy because we're trying this out. But I guess it shows if we can overcome this sort of team with this combination of Pokemon. That the team can operate very well without those restricteds. This core can work very well. So it's going to be a big test. And it's a bit of a shame that we're going into this first one and we're not bringing any of our restricted Pokemon. But I feel like we need all of the different support options and the rain mode here is just too important, I think, not to bring. So we're going to see Eveltal and Stack Attack come out for my opponent. 
Uh, we see the Aurora, Dark Aura, and we get the Intimidate onto that Stack Attacker, which is which is super nice. So, um, we can fake out Stack Attacker, deny that Trick Room, turn one if we want, and I think I probably just want to um, pivot out onto the Evelto. I'm totally honest, but like one of the things that does worry me is if the Evelto switches out into Growl and it does deny us getting uh, a little bit better board position, so to speak. So. But I am just going to lock into that, just just safely turn one. We don't need to take any risks, anything like that. So we'll just try and get some damage onto this Eveltal. Stack attack are just protecting here. We could have went for the double in on Eveltal for sure. Um, there's the fake out into that slot. Full switch. Now the question. Ooh, okay. I think, oh, it's a critical hit. That's why I did so much. It was like, mm, maybe this isn't a Salt Fist, Ivalto. Uh, I think it is with that crit. I'm going to bring in Politoed. It seems a bit counterintuitive here because the thing is, I don't want to bring in Ludicolo. We need Ludicolo for later on in the match. We definitely need Politoed, but Politoed's a lot bulkier than Ludi. So if a big attack comes out from this Ivalto, then it means that we are going to be able to take it a lot easier and we also don't get snarled as well. So there we go. I'm going to see. The Evelto just throw out that Snarl, reduce our special attack on both of our targets. Um, I think what we'll do here is U-turn out onto the Stack Attacker, and I'm going to double into it, since it's just protected. Um, and I'll try and maneuver Ludicolo onto the field. Now this Evelto can Snarl again, can knock off our Politoed, has been intimidated though. Um, but we can't really do too much to prevent the Stack Attacker from getting this Trick Room set up right now. We are going to see it switch out. It is pressured right there um, and Groudon hit the field. Now I don't mind this too much. Too much. And an Oblivion Wing. And it is going to be into the Politoed. Aye. Ah, uh, hi. So not doing too much damage, but giving Eveltal a little bit of health back, which is super important. We are going to get a Scald. If, a, if we get a burn here, then, you know, that's that's massive for us. No burn, no burn, no burn. I love the, the hanging tension there that we have. We get the U-turn off, though, so we've still got that Intimidate to bring in. Um, it's going to be quite nice, probably, just to get Tapu Koko and knowing that, that Eveltal is a Soul Fest. We've got a free U-turn pivot, uh, Volt Switch pivot there, if we want. And what we can do is switch um, Politoed out. for Ludicolo and then Volt Switch out into Politoed. Um, and we've got to hope that we don't see an Oblivion Wing from the Avelta, which we don't. We're just going to see it switch out and Incineroar hit the field now, which is fine. A lot better for us um, going into this next turn. Um, but this is the beauty about having that really fast like pivot out with, with something like Tapu Koko in these sort of situations. You can do the same sort of thing with Kyogre, um, but I feel with Kyogre you worry a lot more about its health um, and the position of that based on its water spout, whereas with Politoed, because you've got a berry, and it's a lot more defensively bulky, I feel, than, um, than Kyogre. It probably isn't, but it, pro it feels like it is. It feels like it's a little thick toad that can just soak up so many attacks. Um, but yeah, this is fine, because we've got the, the Incineroar out now, the Groudon's in a lot of trouble, and the Precipice. Ludi avoids, and Polito going to take it, but should be able to take it pretty comfortably. We are pretty defensively built, and that will just proc a delicious berry for us to chomp on, get all that health back, which puts us in a really nice position going into this next turn. Now the stack at uh, the Groudon is in a, a, like a, lo a, a lot of trouble and um, going into this next turn. Now we can Scald into that slot, um, Because there's going to be a fake out from the Incineroar, for sure. Um, I mean, I'm kind of tempted to just Scald and go Hydro Vortex into that slot. If I'm, if I'm like completely honest with you. But I kind of want to Hydro Vortex the Incineroar slot as well, just in case we see that switch out. Because it feels like it can't get a fake out off and it's sitting in front of the field. And it's in a real prone position to get faked out and Scalded. But we're going to see the Groudon switch out now. No fake out from the Incineroar, so it means we are going to be able to get rid of it and do some good damage to this stack attacker with the Scald from our Politoed. And also by doing that Volt Switch switch out for the Politoed, get the rain back in in that really nice position, we are kind of resetting the Snarl Drops as well that we've, we've took previously. So there we go. 
Incineroar. Bye bye. So that's quite nice. We get rid of that pretty handily. Uh, we'll not be able to take down the stack attacker, but we will be able to do some good damage to it at the same time. Um, oh man, that's crazy damage. Groudon could come in now, but I feel like it's more likely that the the Velta comes in. Um, thank you, Windows, for asking me if I want an update right now, which I do not. Uh, Evelta coming back in, yeah. Um, that would have been nice if we'd had a uh, Z move still. Um, but I think we can just scald the stack attacker again. Hmm, or do we? I mean, stack attacker, yeah, I think we do. And we'll bring in Tapu Koko for Ludi. Because it makes it really difficult for my opponent to bring the Groudon in in these situations as well because you're risking a burn every time you bring it in on a potential Scald or a Water type attack even though you are disrupting our weather and getting your own up. Um, we're going to see an Oblivion Wing. No switch from the stack attacker here. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to see that into the Tapu Koko. Do some nice damage. And break our Sash. But we'll get the Scald off into the stacker. Don't want to risk that Groudon coming in to be honest. And it makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense. Um, but now we can do the exact same thing again. The exact same thing. We can Volt Switch out onto the Eveltal. Our terrain is gone, so we'll be able to get that back up. We'll bring the Politoed in on the Tapu Koko slot. Um, and we'll bring Incineroar in where the Politoed is. So we'll get an Intimidate off onto the Groudon. Um, and just the maneuverability of these... These four Pokemon, it's just incredible. Um, you know, they have so many options and just open up the, the board so well for, for, F, for like just for you to set up that perfect board position to kind of close the game down pretty seamlessly. You're gonna get that Intimidate onto the Groudon, which is super helpful. Um, we will be able to Volt Switch out with Tapu Koko. Preserve it for later on. We're not doing that much yet, see? So bulky the Eveltal, um, and we'll be able to, like I say, get the Politoed back in. That's the big thing. And um, the next turn, we can just go for a fake out, perish song, and then it will lock the game. And maybe we can get a quick forfeit from my opponent, but maybe not as well. And uh, we'll have to see. So there's the Oblivion Wing, and it's going to be into Incineroar. Incineroar, yeah, which probably puts it in range for a Precipice Blades, maybe, but it has to hit. It has to hit. <clears throat> Which it does. Maybe we survive it. Oh, we do! Incineroar! <laughs> the king. The king cat takes it. Excellent. So, like I say, puts us in that really nice position where we can um, we can fake out. I don't know what I want to fake out. Like, we can fake out the Veltal. Um, we're probably better off faking out the Groudon, to be honest, and go and perish song. Because we've got to rain it, we don't mind. Like, it makes more sense to fake out the Eveltal because of the Groudon having access to protect, but at the same time, the Eveltal has to target the Politoed here to um, remove it. And Okay, I mean, that's fine. Snarl will take that all day long because now we got the, the perish up. And that should lock the game for us pretty nicely. <sighs> Perish count three. So I think what we'll do is bring in Ludicolo. Hmm. Or I might pivot out with with um, Incineroar onto Evelt. Uh, no, we'll go out onto Groudon. I feel like we do get taken down here. And I don't feel like this is the turn where Hmm. I'm going to bring in Tapu Koko, actually. I'd rather lose Tapu Koko than lose Ludicolo in this situation. And my opponent just forfeits. Like we say, we get the quick forfeit there. So good game to my opponent. And uh, the team doing surprisingly well without its restricted pairing. So hopefully in the next one that we go into, we can actually feature this Dustman Necrozma for the reason that we brought it today. And the uh, the Curum White as well. So <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be the Politoed and Ludicolo show. The throwback to VGC of past days. Yeah, it hasn't been, like, uh, I guess it did all right in like portions of 2018, but I feel like Ludicolo Politoed hasn't done like super well recently, like since 
maybe 2015, 15 maybe, maybe even before that, I guess. I don't know. So we've got our next opponent. Quick as that. Let's get into team preview. It's a very good one. It's going to be Xerneas Groudon, Dalmanitan, or Dominician, as some of my friends re refer to it as, um, Incineroar, Serena, and Amoongus. So we've got the restricted pairing of Xerneas Groudon. We've got Dominician, um, or Dom... <laughs> I can't even say it right now. <laughs> Hibiki, Alex, he's cursed me with this. Um, we've got Incineroar, Serena, and then the Amoongus there. Um, and for those of you out there that don't know, I'll explain the story about the Darmanitan a bit later on. So, what are we going to do here? Our rain mode, very good again. We'd have to be a little bit more careful about the Serena and the Amoongus for sure. Um, but we can, we can really punch holes through things if we do lead with Polytod Ludicolo. And the nice thing I think about Polytod Ludicolo here is that we do have um, probably a lot slower Polytod than the Groudon. So it gives us that nice option to um, to pull that in whenever we want. Do we need Intimidate and Fake Out support here? We've got Fake Out support on the Ludicolo. The Intimidate, mm, not so important, I don't think. So I'm going to bring Curum White and I'm going to bring Dustman and Cosma just for the fact that we haven't brought Dustman and Cosma or Curum to any matches so far today and we've got to have them in at least one so why not bring them to this one so let's see and it might just be another Polytoad the Polytoad show the Polytoad show but it's a nice team and I think it's a good one for just picking up having a bit of fun with this one and um, so I would highly recommend and if you do try it out do let me know because I'd love to hear what your, your thoughts are on this this build in particular we're gonna see Incineroar and we're gonna see Xerneas come in from my opponent here um, I think one of the things we could do is potentially just fake out the Xerneas um, and switch our Polytoad so we've got it in the back for later on um, we could also Z-move the Xerneas. But you've got to kind of keep in mind that the Groudon's likely to come in at some point here. So I'm going to just protect Poly... Um, no, I'm going to fake out the Xerneas here. We could take a U-turn from the opposing Incineroar for sure. But I mean... That's fine. That's fine. We're not going to go down to a U-turn. It will do good damage and put us in a, a bit of a precarious position, but it's worth stopping the Geomancy. We can't let this Geomancy get set up. We've seen so many times this last two weeks where we've just allowed it to freely get set up, and uh, it's never it's never got that great. We are going to see the Incineroar switch straight out, and uh, the Amoongus, Amoongus come in. So, Zonia's just protecting here as well. I wonder if my opponent's brought the Groudon. You've got to bring the Groudon to this matchup, right? You have to bring the Groudon to this matchup. Um... So, Photon Geyser is very threatening here for my opponent. Um, I think I've just got a Waterium Z into the, the Xerneas and Photon Geyser into the Amoongus. Because um, you can only do one of two things here. You can either bring in the Groudon um, to disrupt our, our Waterium Z, or you can bring in Incineroar back in. Um, but doing that, the rain's still up, and we're still going to have a real good chance to pick up the knockout onto the Xerneas. If this is standard for... It being no special defense, then there's no question we take it down with the the Hydro Vortex in the rain. So, <clears throat> and you can't rage powder that attack away, unfortunately, Mr. Amoongus Mushroom Man. But getting a photon guys, we probably won't pick up the knockout. Okay, he's gone for it. Just doing it. Don't care. Balls deep. And here we go. Like I say, if it is that that Xerneas, we can remove it, and the matchup becomes so much easier from here on out. Uh, especially because the Amoongus isn't putting anything to sleep. There's always the risk there of it going for a spore into your Dustman in the Cosmos slot. Um, because it's likely carrying that Payapa Berry. So here we go. Let's see. Is it bulky or is it not bulky? Not bulky! Goodbye, Xerneas. See you another day, dear man. Um, and then the, the Photon Geyser and there's the, the Papaya Berry. Which, in my mind, I think... I Switching the Zern out there is a way better option. Um, and I would question if you've got the Groudon in the back, then I don't know. I don't know. Bring it in. Bring it in. There he is. There's the man. Rah. Okay. So, Groudon coming in. But I mean, we've got a pretty safe switch now for 
a polytoad and just and just hydro pump or grass knot. I kind of want to hydro pump because hydro pump will pick up the knockout where grass knot will just miss it without life orb or expert bell onto Groudon. Um, and my opponent just forfeits. Oh, it's only 20 minutes. So we've got time for another battle, guys. We've got time for another one. How exciting. So this is good. This is good. This is working out perfectly. And um, this will be the next match where it'll be like, everything goes wrong. And it'll be like, why did I use Dusk Main across my um, But no, it's nice. I'm enjoying it already. No regrets about it. Uh, never have any regrets bringing anything on the channel. Have regrets about bringing certain things to the stream. If you saw the stream on uh, Tuesday night, we played Kieran Black, the, uh, the good old brother of uh, Kieran White. And it did not so well um, but I'd, I'd like to play around with Kieran Black to be honest um, I took a, a complete inspiration from a team that we played actually on the channel and um, I kind of just put my own EV spreads to it I didn't really have too much information on it so I'd like to build something myself but we have a next opponent and we'll get straight into it they're playing a team of Xerneas Groudon Volcarona, Tapacoco, Incineroar, and Among Us. So we've got that same combination of Xerneas and Groudon here. We've got the Volcarona sporting this time alongside that Among Us with both having access to Rage Powder. The Z move is likely to be on the Volcarona. Volcarona has access to also Tailwind that we need to be careful of. And then you've got the Tapacoco for terrain support. You've got the Incineroar for fake out support with that Intimidate as well. And we all know about the Incineroar Xerneas lead and how threatening that can be for ourselves. But like I said in that last match, I do feel like having the Politoed and the Ludicolo up front because of the Politoed being a lot slower than something like Kyogre and um, it doesn't feel like this team has a slow ground on it. Um, so I'm going to go exactly the same again and give it a whirl. So we will come straight back. Out of team preview and uh, like magic it was it's all worked out perfectly here. So good luck to my opponent. I feel like this might be a little bit tougher. The Volcarona changes things a little bit uh, because it does threaten the Ludicolo pretty hard. Mm. Especially if my opponent just switches in freely on the um, the Groudon when the Volcaron is on the field. Um, be able to take a Hydro Vortex 100% in CERN, I would imagine. And do some big damage. But we're going to see the Xerneas and the Incineroar again. The most favoured lead of every single VGC player in VGC Moon Series on the School of Hard Knocks. Uh, okay, so we know what we're gonna do here. We have to deny the the, the, um, the Xerneas Geomancy here. And again, if it is that same Xerneas with the same... I'm gonna switch straight into just... Do I? Do I? Do I? I mean, one of the nice things is here, we could probably be a bit smarter and switch into Curum because if the Groudon does come back in, we've got a way to really like neutralize the ground on. Um, I'm gonna fake out the Xerneas regardless. Um, and if the Amoongus comes in as well, we've got the Z move there. So we've got both Z moves on the field at once. So we can just take our pick. Especially if Xerneas switches out, then you know we can we can adjust from there. We're gonna see the Incineroar switch out again. Is this the same guy that we just played? Groudon coming in this time now, so that's fine. And the thing is mm, the thing is now though the Xerneas is going to be faster than our um but I guess the thing that we could do is potentially just take down the Groudon and bring in Duskman to Crosma because we could Z-move the Groudon for sure here uh, but it's likely the Groudon switches out to be honest And I kind of want Dustman the Cosma on the field, but I don't really want to switch Dustman the Cosma in when Groudon's out on the field because taking a press of his blades is is pretty crazy. Um, but I don't want to waste the Z move into. I feel like the Groudon switch is straight back out. I'm going to go into Politoed and I'm going to go for that Hydro Vortex into into Xerneas, even though it's going to be into a Xerneas that has Geomancy. So we're going to switch out with Kyurem, are we going to see the Groudon switch out? Please see Groudon switch out, please see Groudon switch out. Groudon, Groudon, Groudon withdrew. So we made, I guess, the better decision out of everything there, to be honest. Um, there's the Geomancy. Boop, boop, boop. 
yeah, the Hydro Vortex probably do about 60-60%, mm, I don't know. I mean, we still got the Dustman and Crosma in the back, so we're not in the worst of positions. It's just not having this to kind of fire off first. Puts us a little bit behind in the match, but it's not to say that we can't come back from this. we just got a little bit more work to do to kind of close this one out. So there's the Hydro Vortex coming out from the Ludi. We do lose the Icinium Z on our Curum now, though. Um, so we've got to rely on those blizzards if we go for anything. <sighs> that does nothing, does it? That does nothing. Mm. I think one thing we could do now is just um, perish song. Uh, I think it's a, a really nice soft check to Geomancy in general. Because it, it puts your opponent on a timer to make use of those Geomancy turns. Uh, Polytoad's going to be bulky enough to take a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast. We're just going to see the Amoonga switch out again and Groudon come back in. Um, and that makes a lot of sense, especially because it's obvious that we would bring in our Desmond and Necrozma here. And there's a Dazzling Gleam, which, yeah, Polytoad takes, but it's just out of berry range, which is a little bit a little bit difficult for us to, uh, to deal with. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. And now I think we have to bring something into sack. Um, and out of everything that we've got, I'm gonna opt to sack uh, Kiram, unfortunately. Um, because if my opponent keeps both of these things out on the field, then we can probably maneuver a board position where they have to either take something down in the last turn of the Parish Song for them, or switch out. So there's Moonblast. It's into the Necrozma, which is interesting. Okay, so that means that we are actually going to be able to keep Cure around and not lose it. I thought maybe a Dazzle and a, something like that would have been a lot better. Um, and there's a Perish Song. Um, probably have to protect Cure and bring in Polytod. That's the thing. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. Because I think Dustman and Cosmos may be a win con here. Like Ludi can. Like Ludi and Kieran can do stuff to Incineroar. And just having the rain up is pretty nice for when we bring Ludi back in. We've got that fake out support as well that we can make use of. Especially if the Polytoad goes down here, which I'd assume it probably will. And there's a Dazzling Gleam, which this should be enough to take down the Polytoad, I would imagine. If not, barely holding on, Polytoad kick around for another turn or two, but no, that's fine. And now, like I say, we've got the... Um, my opponent not switching the Groudon out there, I think, like, really kind of allows us back into this game slightly. Um, because we've got the, Poly the Ludicolo to come in now, in the rain, which is massive for us. Because we can fake out, we have to fake out the Xerneas. Um, but we can predict what comes in on that a guard on slot like say um, Incineral for instance which I think it probably is going to be the Incineral um, and I kind of want to hmm like I've got to fake out the Xerneas there's a part of me that's like don't fake out the Xerneas you don't need to it's going to protect or it's going to switch out Gonna protect the switch out. Uh, no, we'll not risk it. I'll go for the Earth Power into the Groudon, expecting the Incineroar to come in there, and I'll just fake out and be safe. Yes! Oh, we could have done it! We could have done it! Uh, Mungus is coming in, and then we'll see the Incineroar come in for the Groudon. Yeah, 100%. But I mean, we get an Earth Power into the Incineroar, which is, not, which is always nice. It's always nice to get that get into that slot. Um, we do lose access to our rain though, which is a big blow to us. Um, but another Earth Power will be enough to take down that Incineroar. So, I think what we'll do is we will protect Curum White, um, and I'm going to bring in Dustman and Cosma. I don't feel like you get a spore in that slot. If, if they do spore, it's not going to be into that slot because of the Ludi there. And I feel like you kind of probably want to fake out the Ludi in this situation, maybe switch into Groudon. 
Maybe you don't see a fake out at all. Fake out, yep. Into dust main and then a spore into yeah. Yeah, okay. So now we need to hit a blizzard. And a photon geyser. Um hmm. Oh we go for another earth power into the incineral. And go photon geyser and hope that that's enough. Um I think we need to check the incineral. If I'm like completely honest, but I feel like the Incineroar actually switches out here. That's why I want to go Blizzard and Photon Geyser into the Amoongus. Um, and we should be able to take an attack with Incineroar here from like an either target. I'm going to go for the Blizzard. It's oh, it's very risky though. The Blizzard could totally miss and then we're, we're absolutely screwed. We just got to hope that the Photon Geyser is actually enough to get the Amoongus. I think that's the thing here. Incineroar withdrawing. Okay. Oh, we could have went for it could have went for it because if that Amoongus is the papaya berry variant which I'm kind of guessing that it is gonna be okay so it switches out we could have went for that we could have went <laughs> we could have went for it <laughs> oh that is such a shame um, and if we've been maybe a bit smarter we could have maybe went for um, the double in on it's like you can't really leave the Amoogus unchecked, though. That's the problem, I feel. Um, now, I think one thing I want to probably do here is uh, switch in Ludi and protect Dustman Necrozma. Now, we're probably going to see Incineroar come out. For my opponent. Because we could see the the two turn geomancy here where the geomancy comes now yes but we can totally disrupt that geomancy ah <sighs> give my opponent okay moonblast it's into ludi hmm. that's interesting do we go for the trick room though i don't feel like we do because it just gives Amoongus so much, so much room to operate. Um, we fake out the Incineral, for sure. Uh, and we have to Sun Steel Strike. That's Xerneas. Xerneas probably switches out though. This is like a bit of a checkmate in every position, but we're kind of really behind on resources here. Amoongus coming in. Okay. We're gonna see. Um, yeah. Rage powder now. And we could grass knot into the Xerneas because if it goes for the two turn geomancy here, uh, I'm gonna go for the photon geyser again. Incineral might just come back in on that Amoongus slot, like it would make a lot of sense. Okay, so we're going to see the Xerneas switch out, Incineral come in on that slot, get the Intimidate. All important Intimidate, and now this Amoongus is just going to put our Duskmane to sleep. A little bit of chip into this Incineral with a Grass Knot, doing huge damage. I feel like this has fallen away from us, our opponent is playing like to their outs here and doing a good job kind of closing us chipping us down. That Intimidate coming in super useful there, and there's the Spore. And without Coco protection here, we can't really do too much about that, unfortunately. Um, now the Fake Out here is a bit awkward, but we can... I guess we protect Ludi, and we try and wake up, and try and get a Photon Geyser into the Amoogus. Hopefully the Incineral doesn't attack, and hopefully it goes for a Fake Out here. It's got to feel a little bit threatened from the Ludi still. It's gone U-turn into that Ludi slot. Okay, so this gives us a little bit more time to wake up here, which is perfect, which is really ideal for us. There's a spore. Sunlight fades as well, which is perfect, especially if Necrozma can wake up and we can get a Hydro Pump off into this Incineroar this next turn. Let's go Hydro Pump. It has to hit. Missed earlier, but hopefully we can hit this time. Hydro Pump. No switches. We should get it. Come on. Boom. We just need Necrozma to wake up. Come on. Hype the stations. We're going to be able to do it. Come on, Necrozma. Wake up. 
Yes! Come on! Come on! The crossman! Rush! <laughs> we can do this. We can so do this now. Still not over. Ah! Oh, would you believe it? And our opponent has disconnected. How disappointing is that? That is very disappointing. It's a little sad way to end the episode, to be honest. Ah! Oh, after such the hype, they might have heard my shouts of joy when we, we got the Necrozma wake up when we needed it. But when you wish so much, it does happen. Right, we're going to end it there, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and just having this brief view of the Duskman Necrozma with the Curum. Uh, I think the Politoed has probably stole the show today for us all. And it's a good thing to just consider if you want to build something where you think, Kyogre would be so good in here with the rain, but I can't fit Kyogre and X and X into my team. Well, you can. You can think of Politoed because Politoed Ludicolo still has a lot of viability in this format. Um, so just consider it when you are playing it. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. I'm just going to say thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I'm really going to look forward to hearing your comments um, about this one. So do let me know as soon as possible and uh, I'll speak to you all later. So have a great day. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Take care of yourselves and until next time. Bye-bye.